Hey everyone, thanks for joining us today. It's me and Sean. Hello. And we're going to be working on a bunch of different stuff. Hopefully we have enough time in this hour to cover everything. Uh, but I'm doing a quick glow effect technique for uh, Mr. Caspian's newly acquired Cricks. Uh, that he already got base coated up so quickly. Um, and then from there, Sean's going to be running uh, a demo on what to do with basing. Because, um, you know, uh, it's easy to base something. It's hard to make that step from just simple basing to the next step and uh, make a good transition. Yeah, a, uh, yeah, a bad base job can really draw away from the model. So, uh, yeah. So Sean's got a couple of simple techniques to teach you to take that basing to the next step, uh, which is really good because uh, you got to think about a lot of stuff while you're basing. Uh, you know, the scale of the model uh, is a big one. Uh, the color scheme of the model too, and then also being true to uh, the battlefield and all that. Right. So, the, um, yeah. If you have a yeah. Makes it really stick out. Right. Like uh, for my Thousand Suns, they're mainly blue, and so I put them on a tan, like a light tan desert base, which makes them uh, kind of pop out. Right. And yeah, so uh, right now I'm working on the glow effects for John, and um, I started kind of telling him earlier that you got to think about it in reverse. Uh, to make glow effects really pop, you want to start with your light colors first as a thin glaze, at least for this technique. And so what I'm going to do is take a thin down white, and I'm going to basically get in all the cracks and crevices that John wants to glow, super thin. And you can actually be a little messy with this because, you know, light doesn't really follow rules, right? Or, you know, it doesn't have to follow the lines of a model. It follows its own rules. Um, so it's going to seep out from these little vents and kind of coat the, the, other, the rest of the model in uh, this kind of ambient light. So I am in the process of just blocking in all these whites. And I'm going to let them dry a little bit. And I'm going to come in with the other colors to kind of pop it out. Okay, uh, I guess I just moved to, I just changed over the figures here. Originally I had some of the uh, Crimson Fists that I'm doing for David. And uh, you know, their basing is a kind of you know, broken cityscape concrete type effect. It's actually done with two different uh, grades of sand, done in different patches to create um, a little more uh, visual variety. Also to scatter the light because they're otherwise a really dark color scheme. And these guys here, I have a little Uruk and He's on, he uses a lot of the same techniques as the Space Marines with uh, two different grades of, of sand. But his, you know, as opposed to a concrete gray, his is a kind of grayish brown, very kind of a churned earth effect with the flock on top of it. And right here is a uh, Versaga. Versaga, it's a, um, uh, a, a Roman general. And because he's a character on a larger base, I put a lot of more effort into it, so uh, I built it so it looks like he's running along the ruins of an old Roman road, so I built cobblestones out of uh, uh, credit card plastic. Oh, nice. And uh, next to it is a uh, Roman mile marker. Not paying attention. Yeah, uh, I'm going to the next step on these guys, which is putting in some of this yellow where I put the white originally. You can already see that it's this nice, vibrant yellow. Yeah. Uh, which is great for something that's like, you know, engine. It's engines are going, it's emitting a lot of light. It's really going to get out there. And you can kind of work with this as much as you want. Um, I have a tendency to go back and forth until I achieve that, that kind of bright brightness that I like. So I'm going to do this yellow coat followed by a yellow orange on the outer rims and kind of blend those together. And then I'm going to come back in with a little bit of that white to make sure that it looks like heat is definitely coming from the inside of this. Um, something to always think about when you're painting anything that's glowing or emitting light in any way. Uh, usually the brightness will always come from 
the center mass of it, the inside. So it makes sense to have your lightest colors be the meat of the uh, part. Uh, remember, like you know, fire is the hottest, closest to the uh, center. The center, yeah. <clears throat> and you always want to follow that because that's how you know your your brain kind of translates that glow. So I got the yellow down, and now I'm going to start doing this yellow orange. And everything's super thin down, because uh, if you try to go too thick, it's not going to be translucent enough to really have that effect to it. So make sure things are properly thinned while you're doing this, and always drag your brush away from the point you want to be the brightest because you want to try to stop it from pulling or collecting where the, the bright part should be. I guess you know it goes without saying this this part's messy so usually you want to do this first. Like, oh I like doing it last to, oh, to get really? that that light effect seeping out. Well I guess um, the like within the rib cage effect. Yeah. Because so, then you're gonna you're gonna come back and do the rib cage but you know, then you can go back and do the kind of sort of brushing over it, uh, yeah. um, spot spotlighting. Uh, over here is uh, so my technique for the uh, like the two rock base. I have this uh, heavier rock, heavier sand, and then this you know the really fine sand. Uh, so and I use good old Elmer's glue, and then I just kind of uh, put it on a just um, pour out a, uh, a droplet on here and then I'll spread it like butter with it. Okay. Yeah, I think it's important to know to not use your brush with the Elmer's glue unless you want to wreck your brush real quick. Right. Now, what I'm doing is I'm doing small patches of the larger grit. Put it in there, shake it off, and then you you end up with. John. Is that looking good? Yeah. So you know, shake it off and let that set a second. So I'll move on to the next guy. Usually, if I'm basing, I'll just do a, a bunch all at once because it just saves time. Oh, I and mean, you'll notice I'm doing this before I prime them. I, for most of my models, I do that because that means that means. Uh, because you know, once I prime them, they're going to get the, the sand will be painted black to be dry brushed into the appropriate color. So I figure, go ahead and do that before I prime. See what we're doing. Mm -hmm. Keep going up center. Just kind of little patches of glue. Reminds me, do you, either of y'all play Apes Odyssey or Apes Exodus? Yep. Yes. It reminds me of one of the units from that. Like, uh, I forget what they're called. But one of the guards? Yeah, one of the guard units that runs after you. You just got like two legs. Well, actually, wait. well it is just a mobile bear trap. <laughs> so once I've uh, once I've done I've done the first pass with the the uh, heavier grit, I'm moving with the fine grit, and that's just a matter of uh, right. 
this is where you can play around with how thick you want your sand to be. If you want it, if you want like really thick uh, layers of sand that will build up so it looks like your figure's feet are like digging or sinking into the ground, you uh, you can uh, just do layers of it. But I prefer to do one thin layer and then might I do might do a second later. Right, yeah. Just gonna spread it around key point to when you're doing this is you might get some glue on the feet. You can always fix that later. I try to avoid getting any of the sand or flock on the feet because you know, that, that doesn't necessarily look too good. One of the big things with going with such a light color over a dark base is uh, getting coverage. Mm. So don't be afraid to keep kind of reapplying the coats. I guess, I guess you know thin coats means you don't gum up. Yeah. So slowly but surely we'll bring this up to the color we want, but we don't want to rush it. I guess that's a good, that's a good uh, thing to worry about when anytime you paint is sometimes it just takes time yeah. and uh, don't rush. Sometimes because if you do, then you're, yeah, like your eventually work, your like, work looks rushed. <laughs> people will get you know flustered or try to like start going quick, and whenever I start feeling that, I just take a break. I just walk away because <laughs> I don't want to wreck my model because I'm getting impatient. Right. Um, so, everything takes time, uh, especially painting, but you know, it's part of the hobby. Do you have any questions? Uh, <laughs> oh, so, uh, oh, you're uh, not finishing uh, it. Yeah, I know, I'm not finishing it. John painted most of this. I'm just showing him how to do the glow effects on this one. That way I can do the glow for the rest of my models. Yeah, so John Caspian will be in the league. I hope you show up too, JB. It would be yeah. nice to see you out here. Um, but, yeah, I'll be painting um, my gator soon. I have my Rathler right here that I'll be working on uh, right after I'm done doing this glow effect tutorial. Or maybe I'll be painting the child. Um, we'll see. So I moved on from the larger grit finer grit and uh, it's pretty seamless though it gives you a nice uh, nice effect of really broken ground which I guess is appropriate for space brains here so I'll show you all on the camera I'll put in front of Sean real quick so my uh, lower is the Averland sunset and then the higher one is the demonic yellow which I will mix with white yeah is that it um, one of the things that I like for glow effects is to make sure that they're super saturated. So that just means that there's not a lot of like whites or blacks in them, that the color pigments are super bright. I guess plus that will avoid the problem of the, the colors fading. Correct, yeah. I, I feel like when they're a little more saturated or desaturated that they just don't show up as well. So I will put the my demonic yellow yeah. as the glowing first. Well, remember, as you said, start with the, the base the white, everything white first. Mm -hmm. uh, right, right, right. Which is my dragon white. Uh, and I also do a thumb palette. Yeah. Thumb, thumb, thumb palette is the, <laughs> the best palette. <laughs> Well, I do want a wet palette, for sure. Yeah. Wet palettes are nice, um, especially if you have a tendency to mix your own colors. Mm. Uh, like like you said, mixing the um, the demonic yellow with some, some white and such. But I shouldn't have to blend too much, right? No. I guess the effect you want to go with that at this scale is that 
you're not going to have a heavy blending of those of that thing because yeah, mostly layering. Well, you just want well, so too much blending and it's not it's not bright anymore. Right. You want a strong highlight in that glow. That white tone. So, a lot of this is now just coming back, and as soon as we get that good like coverage of yellow and that orange mm -hmm. bleeding across the model, I like coming back with that white and just highlighting the center mass to really give you a, a focus of what the brightest is. Now, John, are you going to do a glaze on top of that, or is that just as is? Um, I could do a glaze. Um, so I'm going to go first and do white now. Yeah, yeah. so like just thin down the white and like go over everything, and then okay. I'd start with the demonic yellow, a thin demonic yellow over the, the white. Sweet. But yeah, um... We have another question. It's a JV. Okay, here we go. Ross says, uh, surprise you're not going the Crick's neck right green. Yeah, no, I uh, I like gold, purple, and silvers and whatnots. Yeah, my own my own Crick's are the uh, are is the you know, standard green glow. Right. Yeah, so uh, the nice thing about this yellow glow effect as opposed to the green one is that it really contrasts the uh, the gold or not the gold, the purple that John initially put down. So it'll pop out a lot better. I believe it is a bluer purple compared, it's a more of a violet compared to my traditional purple I do, which I normally do the Citadel base, which is, uh, actually I have that guy over there. Yeah, so we can compare the two colors a little bit. You might not be able to see it too much, but it's just a little less Vibrant, which yeah. allows the go, uh, the yellow to pop out a lot. I think I'm using all my light theory for the photography, so I don't know. No, a lot of that transfers over. So yeah, no problem there. A lot of the things that you'll learn in either art or photography or really any sort of like things that deal with color theory will apply to miniatures and all that as well. I noticed that the purple you were using was a certainly a more duller, uh -huh. not, not as rich as like your Brotherhood stuff. Yeah, because my idea is that they're cricks, they're undead, it's going to be older color colors. I'm going to add uh, maybe a little bit of rust, maybe a little, uh, you know, Yeah, that'd be great. Uh, I also have a gray weathering from the Secret Weapons line. Yeah. Highly recommend it. I need a sealer though, I don't need a sealer. Uh, yeah, we, we have some. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, some. We have some in the back. Okay. We have some employee sealer. Uh, so I want to start working on the mouth of the cage rager next, actually, because once again it has to deal with the uh, glow effects. Oh, sweet. Uh, so I've already base coated it with the uh, necrite green from Privateer Press. So I'm going to go back in and do another layer, and I'm going to start. Um, going in with uh, the yellow for the center mass of the mouth, the, okay. the interior, and then some darker greens for the teeth. I'll be right there. So, um, these guys yeah. are finished the sand, but I can tell you know the glue got on their feet in a few places. So just come in with an exacto, just kind of scrape that away, make sure that the feet are distinct from the sand. Also, also avoids any kind of any glue which might are. Because once it dries, the glue will actually have a kind of a texture to it. So uh, you get, also get that off the feet. I'm going to take some of that yellow that I thinned down earlier. Uh oh. So my twice dried in a bottle somewhere near the nozzle. Oh. And it exploded on the wood cloth. Yeah, that's a common thing that happens with Alejo paints. <laughs> So yeah, uh, once again, slow and steady with, with this stuff. Um, I like using Cygnus Yellow to highlight the Necrotite Green. Um, it's got, it's just like a nice color blend to it. Um, I'll probably put a little white in here as well to kind of cement that. Really get that glow effect. 
Maybe we can tell folks about. Oh, okay. I'm leaking on the model. Uh, maybe tell folks about uh, call, uh, temperature changes with shading and with highlighting. Yeah. So, so that's a big deal uh, that John brought up. Is um, it works even for your basing and all that sort of stuff. Uh, keeping your colors and shadows consistent. Um, generally, light itself will be on the warm side. So, as you're highlighting up the model, mixing in yellows. Um, Provided yellow is a good color for it. Yellows, reds, um, anything on the warmer tones to brighten up your models will pull it forwards. And the same for shadows. You're going to put cooler colors to make shadows recede a little bit more, um, which is a natural uh, color progression. Now, um, I've done it the other way around where I've done cool highlights and warm shadows. Uh, basically, as long as you contrast three temperatures between highlights and shadows, it does a whole lot of help for popping out details in the model. It'll make some things pull a lot closer to your eye and other things recede away um, just based on that. But yeah, so if you do naturally cooler tones for shadows, um, that's that will definitely help um, contrast and also um, making details a little bit more apparent. Also because a lot of color schemes are really strong, like K-Door is red, 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 red. So having a shadow of bluer tone might really, in this case, uh, the purple is uh, on this, in this case, I think the purple is a little cooler mm -hmm. and it's a little duller. So I would want to actually take the shadows a little bit on the warmer side. So when I do it, I'm going to use Agrax, which is a red, well, um, red shade. As I was pointing out, this, you know, it's why uh, visually, you for Kato, or all their glows are icy, and right. cold, which is a really strong contrast. So you know, the, the, the blues and the blue whites, that kind of thing. Okay, um, so I got the. So here's the Marines with their uh, basin. Nice. This is what they're going to look like. Uh, you know, give the, I usually give that like the evening to dry. It's, it's almost so it'll dry fairly fast, but you want to give it plenty of time because otherwise the spray will get in there and might actually uh, dislodge the, the glue. So uh, the next type of basing I want to do is so I have completed models, so I want to add flock to them. So here's a finished Uruk, and then his boss next to him is going to have uh, this flock on it. So. In this, in this case, I only use one type of flock, which is... Let him undo his Actually, using a darker tone to get the teeth to once again reinforce that the glow is coming from the inside, not the outside. It's like cheese. That's why I have it. Yeah. Two flavorings, two flavorings. Terminator. Hey, Elliot. I want for these guys. I want to do kind of a really rough, rough uh, patches of, of grass to show that they're kind of in the wilderness, broken ground. You know. Again, the base will reinforce the kind of theme of the models. So the orcs, all the orcs are all you know broken up and, and uh, rough ground. So I go back in, and what I'll do is I'll just kind of put dots and smears of the glue at random places, kind of brush it up, again still using the uh, toothpick, just brush this along points of the, uh, on top of the flock. Am I going for coverage here because it's, you know, I want the, I want the rock to show through. In certain other models I, I might go for more, uh, more, more grass showing. Oh, that's great. Breath of fire. 
I'm going to do some dry brushing on the child's base and all that. So, how did you do the base? Uh, so I used the um, turf from um, like the Astro Granite and uh, all that sort of stuff to do the base for it. Um, and now I'm just going to do some simple dry brushing to bring it back up before I start putting um, tufts and things like that down on the model. So. Make sure your brush is nice and soft and that the paint is mostly off of it. And do a nice job of just dragging it lightly across. Make sure all those, those nice little details pop. Okay, now the last thing I want... These are relatively new. But a lot of people have been using them, which is the uh, GW texture paints. Mm. So I'm just going to do uh, the Tyranids that I've been doing for John, including all one eye here. He's in progress, but I can go ahead and do his base. I, I, spread it on, I spread it onto the surface the same way as uh, the glue. But because of the nature of it, I can. Uh, It, it again spreads like butter, but it's really thick. So you gotta be careful of how you spread it. But when you do, it'll actually uh, you can you can mold it, you can shape it. So while it's still dry, it's just wet sand effectively. So yeah, uh, while I have the cage rager here, I'm going to go ahead and do the same treatment for uh, his base. Nice. Yeah, I'm using for this uh, for the uh, for the tunics, we're doing using a Grillian Badland, which is you know nice sand. And uh, once this is once it's dry, I wash it with uh, Earthshade and then highlight it with a uh, bone color, so you get the kind of so you get the kind of uh, sun bleached desert look. So many of your armies are in, in the desert. Why is that? Um, I like desert themes, and I I spent um, a lot of time doing swamp themed armies. <laughs> that I wanted something like the absolute most contrasting. Right. So. Um, so yeah, I want the swamp yeah. theme or sure. desert theme with thousand suns and tyranids. Plus, it, I guess, plus it allows you to put in the random cactus and the lizards. Yeah, yeah. So it lets me uh, play with desert animals, which I, I'm a fan of. I guess the other advantage of a desert base is that it's not visually too busy. Correct. Yeah, I can let a lot of the, the model actually shine through. I mean, thousand yeah. suns specifically are like highly baroque. Yeah. So. Thousand suns. Like I really want to find someone that makes uh, tumbleweeds. Like I would love to put some tumbleweeds uh, on my bases. Similar with uh, the bases, I'm going to be dry brushing my wrestler. Uh, so generally, dry brushing is. I guess not looked highly upon? Okay, I don't know. I'm not sure why not. It's a perfectly good technique. Yeah, so for something that has a lot of texture to the model, like this black eyed wrestler that's literally just covered in scales and spikes, yeah. uh, dry brushing is the smartest way that I can think of to work with this model. Yeah, dry brush, you know, good, good wash, dry brush, and then you, then you go in with like finer highlights. Yeah. But otherwise, yeah, dry brushing. So, what I need to do after this, like, so the dry brushing phase is going to be uh, a big part of it. But so after the dry brushing, I'm going to come in and go with an ink, not a wash, not a glaze, but an actual ink, and tint the scales of this black hide black to, to make his you know make him true to his name is it what just the scoots on his back yeah it's just the uh, the back scoots so yeah the rest of him is that like normal 
kind of olive green uh, thing that a lot of like my gator men are. It's just that the absolute. Okay. You're painting them as gators in the right? Correct. Yeah. So these guys are going to be painted as American alligators. Um, <laughs> Love it. The, the, well, they're cage control. Yeah, yeah. So, so thematically in the fluff and such, they are Cajun. They are the almost Haitian-esque voodoo practices uh, that have been, you know, made all the more brutal by the fact that they are, you know, sentient. Sentient gators that worship a god of blood. <laughs> so, um, I covered the base with the with the uh, texture paint. All right. And I'm going to give it a few minutes to dry, but then before it'll dry, I want to, I can actually sculpt it a little with the toothpick because I want to put the the effect of footprints. Because you know, old, old, this card effects here is going to be stomping through the uh, sand, so he's going to leave footprints. So I'll come back and let that once it's set up a little. <laughs> and just like uh, with the glue, I would not recommend using a brush to put on this, this texture piece. Because it will kill a brush, actually worse than the Elmer's. Because even Elmer's is just water soluble, you can wash it out. But this stuff actually has, you know, grit in it. Yeah, which will just cause your brushes to fray and... Yeah, well, well, if you get them into the, uh, into the uh, metal sleeve, it's over. I'm going first. So, American alligators are usually what? Like, uh. Gray brown, really. Gray brown, yeah. They're, they're, so. Is it a BLT? It's all about camouflage. They look like. Sticks. They look like, well, they look like the surface of the water, which is kind of a gray. Yeah. Grayish, grayish green. Sometimes brown. Yeah, so I'm doing mine more towards the gray green, but I know if I wanted to be super real, realistic or. <laughs> You can, only go super, you can only go so realistic on a 12-foot uh, you know, gator man. Right. So I like the green aspect to it. Um, it matches how I'm painting my swamps, so right. kind of works out well. Like get that natural camouflage as well. Since the swamps they're going to be chilling in are going to be on that green side of things. Okay. Let's just set up a little. So I'm going to go back in and so I'm just going to dig up a little bit so there's like tracks in the, in the uh, sand. Also this is the point where I'd go back in and make sure to clean it off of the feet. At least the grit part. If it's just, if it's just the paint part is on the feet I can uh, I can just paint over that. Yeah, one of the great things about the, the GW texture paints is the fact that you do get that control over what shows up on your model. Right. Uh, as long as you're mindful of it. <laughs> now, I still prefer this straight sand, but this is uh, pretty good stuff. I hope to, yeah. I'll have to give it more, uh, more, uh, uh, let's try it some more. So the initial dry brush with this Rassler is done. And I'm going to start moving up to lighter and lighter shades with it. Um, and what I'm going to be doing at this point is targeting the, the higher levels of it. So I'm going to be a little bit more careful in my application of the paint. And this is going to be real subtle, so I'm hoping it picks up on camera, but it may or may not. No, it's, it's going. Take a look. Good. Okay. So yeah, I'm going to be focusing more on the raised parts, towards the knuckles, towards the edges of the, the shoots, scoots. Here's the Brute Lord, for instance. He's, a, he's got the finished base now. I think John is going to be adding um, uh, you know, tufts of grass and, and flock to it. Mm -hmm. But this is this is what it looks like when it's dry. When that stuff dries, it, it crackles, so it gives you a nice kind of soil sand effect. Uh, they have different grades, so some of the other, uh, you know, a lot of very popular with the Adeptus Mechanicus models is that Mars stuff, which cracks like uh, dried mud. But then I, I wash this with uh, a brown 
uh, earth shade wash and then highlight it with the bone so you get that out. So it shows off the uh, uh, surface. Also, it's good to work with. It's a good contrast for the dark color scheme of the model. So it really reflects light back up on, into the underside of the model. And uh, this, as a complete aside, here is a troglodon I painted for the store, and uh, this has a this has a larger grit of sand, but painted the same way, I had just a wash of wash of black. Everything's everything's black. Then I dry brush in layers to bring up the highlights, and this one actually has uh, little tufts glued to it because. Uh, this lizard, this lizard man army was envisioned to be kind of a desert theme, which is why they're you know, yellows and reds with uh, really broken, sandy uh, faces. I'm going to mix up uh, a third dry brush color for this guy, and it's going to be a mix of Lauren Forest and Nurgling Green. Um, I'm using a separate brush because I don't want to get my dry brush brush wet. Um, the moment you kind of dump your dry brush brush in water, uh, you, you, you got to wait for it to dry before you can start really dry brushing again with it. It's just the nature of it. Um, yeah, make sure when you're dry brushing it, your brush, brush is completely dry or else it'll screw up everything. Yeah, like there is a technique called uh, wet dry brushing, uh, yes. which I use that all the time. Works, but it's fundamentally different than what I'm currently trying to do with with well, I, my wrestler. Well, I, I like wet brushing, especially if I because that way I can kind of mix the paints on the figure. Right. Um, so, oh God. Yeah. <laughs> just I went a little too hard I didn't make sure that my paint was off enough and so I well, you over highlighted uh, yeah so but once again it's nothing that I can't fix and the nice thing is I started on the actual back shoots that we we're talking about before that are going to get knocked down with the um, the black ink so it's one of those things where yeah I kind of goofed but it wasn't nearly as much of a goop as I initially thought. It is definitely nothing that I can't come back in and fix. So once again, I'm targeting where this dry brushing goes. And it's going to be in a much smaller area than the previous layer. I'm just going to be keeping it dry on there. I'm targeting things like knuckles, fingertips. I guess you could also uh, say he's in the middle of roaring, so his nostrils might be flaring. Yeah. So there's a lot of things that you can use inks and glazes and things like that to emphasize certain features. Um, I'm a fan of going after those nostrils uh, with like a red or with him maybe a purple to make it look not too red. So, he is mostly as dry brushed as I want him to be. Uh, so, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a final light pass of just Nurgling Green to really kind of make those few little accents pop, like the, the thigh spikes, the elbow, and the fingertips, and then the front nostrils. Uh, and then I'm going to call it a day on there so I don't necessarily... 
else so I don't necessarily mess this guy up. So once again, I'm going to start on the back scales to make sure that things are kind of thinned out how I want. And then, like I said, I'm just going to start dragging it lightly across knuckles and finger bones to really kind of give myself that, that final highlight. I'm going to be coming in um, and doing some edge highlights on some of these scales with just the Norgling green, green after I'm done with kind of the, the washing phase. Yeah, um, just like any other highlighting, you highlight where you want your viewer to see. So if you know it, less important things, you don't you're not necessarily going to highlight, say, like the palms of his hands or underside of his tail that much, because they're just not nearly visually as important. Yeah. So joints are always good, hands are always good, uh, and then faces. So I always want to draw people to the snout. The snout's the uh, the money button. <laughs> if you were for this guy. Um, I'm gonna have to come in and manually do the eyes uh, just simply because they don't pop out enough um, because of the, the the mask he's wearing. Now, the guys I have here on the screen are some, of, some more of my Romans. Uh, so their bases actually were done with two different types of flock. Now, I wanted the uh, I wanted the ground to look really natural, not uh, cultivated, but not not as broken up and, and rocky as the like, for instance, the orcs. So, two different flock, two different effects of flock. So you have a, uh, it just creates a lot of it, it's visual interest, and of course it ties into the uh, to the character on his larger base, but it's the same type of flock, which is a good way to tie a whole army together. So yeah, just trying to focus on stuff to bring out details. Uh, the reason why I'm lightening these scales, these back shoots up so much is because I am going to be hitting it with the black ink and I want some of that highlighting that I've built in to show through. Right. Um, so it has that natural transition. Because yeah, even, even with through a wash, that value change will stay. Yeah. So he's pretty much done with the dry brushing step I say as I'm constantly <laughs> as, on there's it. There's a point when you say that's it. <laughs> yeah, so the rest I'm going to accomplish with him is going to be uh, through like inks, glazes, and then doing some traditional like edge highlighting and things like that with him. So yeah. Uh, that's a big step for, for the wrestler for me. Uh, I'm going to try to finish all the skin tones before I move on to other stuff. So I'll be finishing the green scales, doing the underbelly, a nice brownish tan, and then finally going to the ropes and then the turtle shell and the skeletons that are kind of hanging from him so, like this. So well, one I hear has hit the, uh, the, 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 the uh, texture paint has had some time to dry, so you can see the texture that I, I built into it. There's like the kind of a stompy footprints behind him and kind of waves of sand. And for a big guy, you know, these Tyranids have nice big bases, which gives you room for decoration. So I assume at some point he'll get some, uh, some, you know, tufts of grass or flock later. Uh, any questions, anybody? Uh, no, just a lot of people watching. Uh, JB was watching for a while. Uh, I see that my brother's watching, um, which is nice. Hopefully Amelia's watching with. <laughs> Amelia is my niece my one and only niece of course uh, so well, hopefully she'll be a, a, a famous painter one day yeah that's great for sure yeah so going on from from here with it, is there anything else I need to do for that glow effect or is that pretty solid I think it's pretty solid now it's up to you like now we're at the point where this glow effect is now how much do you want it to be glowing out uh, you're welcome to go back in and do the bars again if you felt like, oh, hey, it's, it's overstepping too much or whatever. Um, it's pretty solid, though. Yeah. So, like, I would call this pretty much done, depending on what you want to do with the model. Um, maybe a little bit of tightening up. Um, but this is how I would generally approach a glow effect, especially uh, for this kind of model. 
Uh, it'll look great on the field. It'll look nice and bright. So yeah, and just like that, this guy, his mouth is pretty much done. I might brighten it up a little bit or darken the teeth. Um, one of the big things with darkening the teeth just makes everything else seem brighter. Uh, so the darker you put something around a glow effect, the lighter the glow effect will actually appear. So if you do like a glow effect over white, you're going to have to do something super saturated on the colors to make it appear glowing next to the white. Right. Um, so what that means is like you're going to want a pretty vivid blue or a vivid green coming off of like a white effect. Well, yeah, that, that's, that's again, that's, uh, that's basic color theory, the effect of a bright, a bright uh, object next to a dark object both have the opposite effect to each other. So a darker object gets darker and the brighter object turns brighter. So uh, a glow effect can just be, if you say like uh, on the ribs for that, uh, ribs for the mm -hmm. uh, Death, Ripper. Ripper. Death Ripper there, if you if you like came in there with a really dark color off of the ribs, it would it would make the look, make it look like the glow effect was just very bright, poking out between them. What would I want to put there? Maybe just the silver, the metal. Well, I when I painted mine, I did mine as bone, but it's bone with you know on both sides of the uh, the bone. There's a, the glow continues. Right. But, but I make sure to have a that black line. Mm. So so you have a really sh so because effectively the bone is casting a shadow on itself. Right. Maybe if I just went over here. Gently put a little bit. Yeah, that could work. Just put a gentle amount of the purple. Yeah, yeah you, want, you want it to stand out, so. But yeah, the fi usually the final thing I do when I've done a figure is the base, is, you know, base has been uh, glued on, is, is to go in with the edge color of the edge of the base. Uh, my, the orc, my orc army, most of the most most model I do in it with black edge base. Mm-hmm. Uh, the uh, Crimson Fist I've been doing for David actually have a dark brown, the Rhinox hide, which which I think uh, gives a certain uh, warmth to an otherwise really cold color scheme. The uh, other than the Crimson Fist, the, you know the red the red hands and the symbols, they're mostly just dark blues and, and metal. But uh, we'll see. I prefer black edging on bases because it, uh -huh. it it's. It's, it's a, like framing something in black. Right. It's a it, yeah. It's a visually neutral way to do it. I want I want them to stand out from the base from the uh, table they're on, but I don't want a strong color. So black is the best idea. So. And then you know, all that's left for the that last brute squad is one guy. The guy with the the guy I actually worked on, was working on last week the uh, the gore hacker. Oh, nice. Or gore chopper, whichever. The really big. A really big sword. Big bro. Hmm. So this would be a good thing. So when I'm differentiating like the different layers of the armor. So let's say that this armor's on top, and then I have another layer on the bottom. I want to differentiate them. So since I'm going with the theme of warming up my highlights and cooling down my shadow. No, sorry, shadowing with a warmth, then I will do the lower one a slightly warmer uh, purple. I, will, I wouldn't necessarily, I mean, my, my thought, of course, if you're going to make that, like, it's a layer on top of a layer of armor, right? Yes. I'd, I would just actually, uh, I would shade under, in that under, that uh -huh. the undercut, I would shade that more. Okay, cool. And, and give a really strong highlight on the, on the edges of both armor plates, so that, so that you kind of frame this uh, shadow in, you know, the undercut is, is like kept in shadow. It, it would make both both layers of the armor stand out. On camera, you can really tell when the uh, paint is very thin. You can see right through the the, uh, the paint. Well, it's usually better to be thin than yes. uh, thick. Well, I like the Reaper for that since it is so thin. Yeah, well, I, that's why I really like uh, like Vallejo mm -hmm. because Vallejo you, you can get really thin and it'll still be uh, trans trans uh, sorry opaque. Whereas GW, you thin it down, it turns really translucent or even transparent. Yeah, which so has its has its merits, but uh, not not often. Right. Especially for basing and just getting it done. Right for base coats. Yeah, sweet. There we go. So that'll be. I start. So as John to to recap what John said, 
Uh, get the glow effect, start off with a strong highlight, then you add the color in, the saturation, and then you can go back over and in the middle and put in that bright core as if it's the source of the light. And then Sean was saying for the bases, I mean, you can obviously watch the whole video again, but it's a really cool effect which I'll be using for some of my stuff. I think even these guys. Now, of course, you know, John Caspian is going to be using these Malifaux, these Malifaux Victorian bases, which are pretty nice. Yeah. But you know, they're definitely suited for smaller models, like uh, like Malifaux models. A 40k model would be would kind of struggle to uh, have enough room on a base like that. But on this, <laughs> the same note, I mean, you can make it work. Um, and these models are great scenic bases for for really anything. Um, they're, they're just absolutely fantastic. Now they fit the, um, there's three different types right now. Uh, Victorian ruins, which is what John has. Um, graveyard. Um, and then there's also sewer. Right. So there's all different styles of the bases and uh, they might be coming out with more in the near future, which is pretty neat. Uh, I definitely recommend checking these out. It's They seem pretty cool. And if you wanna do something fancy for your models and not build your own scenic base, uh, I think they're a great pickup. Uh, it's going to look really cool when John gets some of his uh, cricks on them and make them look really nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here, do you mind if I show it off? Yeah, R Rob was just hanging by and he actually has a painted up graveyard base. Look at this thing. Yeah. It is phenomenal. Uh, Rob did a great job of getting all those colors to pop. Um, to me, it's always a difficult thing, especially when you use a lot of brown tones to make them distinct and interesting. But look how great it shows up on the base. So, so who's going to be on that base? <laughs> Yeah, so Rob's actually using his Malifaux bases for Malifaux, as intended. Uh, but yeah, uh, definitely check those guys out if, you, if you're if you in the store and you're looking for something scenic. To also, also, there's the, uh, the, se the secret weapon bases, which are really nice. Mm -hmm. Good yeah. way to theme your army. Uh, I was trying to pick up a whole bunch of Field of Screams for my Grimkin, which I'm not sure if you've seen, but it's... The it's pumpkins, the, right? Yeah, it's the pumpkin patch, which I thought was pretty cool. Uh, so that's something I might eventually transfer some of my Grimkin over to, uh, but as of now I'm going to keep going with my own bases. My uh, my Brewers team for uh, Guild Ball is on. I um, can't remember what it's called. But it was like Celtic Celtic uh, machinery wreckage. It's oh, like nice. it's all like gears and spirals, which I thought you know looks very kind of you know Celtic Scottish effect, yeah. uh, and then painted up painted up in kind of gray colors to contrast because it's a it's a cold color base to contrast them because they're all warm colors. Yeah. Well, cool. Uh, I think that's going to wrap us up for today. Uh, we'll be here next week, or at least I'll be here, and if Sean's available, he'll, he'll try to be here. Um, so until then, we'll see you guys next time. Goodbye. Um, don't forget to send us uh, painting questions or even show off your own models. We'd love to actually showcase them on the stream um, as we're talking. It'd be great. Painting requests. Yeah, yeah. Or